Hey everybody, welcome back to Dunrovin Ranch in lovely Lola, Montana. I am your ranch manager, Kelly, and this is Boots on the Ground, uh, the program during which I show you something at the ranch you can't see from the cameras. It is um, not balmy. It is about 34 degrees. It's uh, We're going to get a rain and snow mix for uh, on and off through tomorrow probably. And we're continuing to winterize the ranch. We're turning up the heat in the automatic waterers. Um, I've overseeded the pastures. The animals have access to shelter. Um, what else? I think we're good to go for the most part. Oh, we've buttoned up the dance hall, which means the front doors are put on and the sides are rolled down and attached uh, to keep that from getting wet. We're in pretty good shape, I think. Uh, today on Boots on the Ground, I'm, uh, I'm responding to a request to show you the winter pasture. The winter pasture, also we call it here sometimes the school land. Uh, we lease the property from the local school district. And currently over there, we have Canner, Flynn, Lady Lanza, and His Majesty Augie. Uh, they're doing great. I'm sure you saw, uh, if you have, if you didn't watch live as I walked Augie over, I'm sure you've seen the movie. Wasn't he amazing? It was, it was, it was great to be on the ground with all of them. You got, you have great, um, you had a great view of the whole herd dynamic that was happening, but boy, to be there on the ground, it was, it was astonishing. You could just feel it. And it was, it felt for a horse person, it really felt like a privilege to be able to really watch how horses take care of their own. Um, you know, Canner was like, no, Flynn, you're mine. You're not going over to Lonza. And Lonza was like, Augie, get behind me because I'm going to kick Canner's behind. It was really, really cool. You could feel it. Uh, we walked the fence line so Augie knew what his boundaries were. We showed him the water. And I think he's happy over there. I mean, it's, it's how he's wired to live, right? Walking, 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 nibbling, nibbling, nibbling with a herd. Um, so I'm going, I took some photos uh, over the winter pasture of um, the water, the salt, the hay, and some of the obstacles that are over there. And uh, I sent them to James. And so uh, without further ado, I will show you. So that's shot right there. Uh, horses need base, basic things. Food, water, and salt. And we always have to make sure they have salt. And we have two different kinds of blocks there. We've got the regular white salt, which is the kind of salt that you and I have. Um, it may or may not be iodized. I think this is not. And then we have a mineral block, which has a variety of minerals that the horses need. And um, they, as horses know when they need it and they help themselves. Uh, everyone up here as well has uh, an option of both those salt blocks. If I notice a horse is going particularly crazy over the salt, I'll just add some salt uh, to their diet. For instance, Crow is just pounding through the white salt. So I'm giving him a tablespoon, tablespoon? Eh, teaspoon, tablespoon, you know. I, I estimate um, in his food, because uh, clearly he needs it and he can't get enough out of a block. So. Uh, that's that's the deal with the salt. And James will go to the next slide, which is some obstacles. These are a little out of order because I took them out of order. Apologies. So there's some obstacles over there that you see that the Tennessee Walking Horse Enthusiasts Association of Montana uh, uses annually. And that is actually a water feature. Uh, they'll put a tarp in it and add water to it, and that's to uh, practice going over and through um, water obstacles, obviously here at the ranch, our horses cross the actual Bitterroot River many, 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 many times over the summer season. So, but some, not all horses get to do that. So they use that uh, so to practice going through water. Um, not all horses respond favorably to various things and you have to work on it. And next is, uh, this is a bridge. It's cool. It's very stable. It actually goes over... I don't know what the what the word is. There's a huge kind of a, a, a dip in the pasture that goes uh, that runs north and south, 
And you probably see when we feed in the truck, we go down a little dip. And next to that dip is the bridge. And horses um, don't always like bridges either. They can't see what's underneath it. It sounds hollow when they walk on it. Um, and again, they're programmed, they're uh, hardwired to stay alive. And if you, they don't know what something is, um, they get pretty nervous about it. Uh, our horses are very good at it. Um, up on some of the trails, we cross bridges. Uh, not the ride, not the official Dunrobin rides, but there's some trails where we can take the horses and uh, cross bridges. The next one is, this is just something to step over and it's not solid. The pole across the top can be knocked off. And it's a good way to teach your horse to pick their feet up. You can go over it backwards, you can go over uh, backwards or forwards actually. Um, something interesting is I had a student on Mickey in the arena yesterday and she was doing very well and Mickey's doing very well and I was trying to raise the stakes for them and I said, okay, why don't you step over this, uh, there's a pole on some, on some X's to hold it up. And I said, okay, here's your, here's your goal. Stop with two feet on one side and two feet on the other. And of course she did it perfectly and I said, okay, now walk on. And it was wonderful because she asked Mickey to walk and he just, his back feet, he was so careful picking them up. So this particular obstacle you can work on uh, having your horse pick his feet up. The next one is, that is a teeter-totter. And uh, that is, that can be challenging for some horses because I ma imagine you're walking along and all of a sudden it feels like the ground is dropping out from underneath you. So that, that can be challenging for a lot of horses. Um, I know I went out there with Erskine last year, Erskine and Brandon. And Erskine was a rock star. We couldn't go over it straight, but we went over it the short way. And that's a good way to start, start your obstacles is just have little successes, little successes, little successes. And I also took a, a close-up shot, uh, the next one, of how it's actually balanced. See, it's, it's just balanced on... Um, on a log and thank you James and the log is in place with just a two by four on either side of it to keep it somewhat stable so it doesn't roll out from under it and that's tricky and you can also see there's spaces in between um, horses need to get used to stuff like that and what do I have next let me see okay you see I think you can see the tires um, from the ranch cam there's actually six three pair they're huge tires, they're halfway in the ground, and you can do all kinds of things with the, you can walk through them, you can weave through them, you can back through them, uh, you can get off and on on them, perhaps on either side of your horse to practice getting off and on um, out on the trail. Maybe you have a tree stump or a rock or the side of a cliff and you need to get off and on. So this is a very good to have your horse stop and stand for you and uh, do all kinds of things on that. And so I, oh, we're back to the, we're back to. I'm going to up another tire. Here. Okay, Jigs, oh, Jigs, sorry. Blossom's going to get, there's another tire. Thanks, Blossom. That is obviously a tire filled with dirt. That's pretty obvious. And what we do with that is we get the horses to step up on it and stop. Uh, get up there with their two feet and stand. Um, you could also, when you're up there, you could do a turn on the forehand. Do you remember what that is? So that's when the horse uh, front feet step in place and the hind end of the horse moves around the front end. You could do that on there. That sounds like fun. Uh, boy, if you wanted to be really crazy, you could back your horse up there and have the back feet stay there. And now we've got, oh, this is just the power supply. Uh, we heat, the water over there is heated and an extension cord is run from that pole through some conduit that James, that Wassum has replaced. Um, and we run the extension cord through there. Uh, what, what, um, it's so weird calling you Wassum. He's here with me in the room. What we've discovered, the Royal we have discovered is that the heating element of that water uh, gave out on us. So tomorrow the new heating element arrives and Mr. Wassum will get it installed and functioning before we go to 14 degrees at night. Isn't that right, James? That's right. We better get on it. He better Coming get on fast. He better get on it. So, and there you go. That's our water. Um, 
old and reliable. Old reliable, we'll call it. And then I think, uh, what else do we have here? I think we have some more hay, how the hay's tarped, maybe? Yeah, lots of bungee cords, some baling twine. And the, that's, that's, gosh, that's 20 tons of hay, something like that. And it was tarped by the grower. Now he knows what he's doing. And even though the sides aren't tarped, you can see that the sides are the sides of the tarp are pulled out, so the water runs off. And I've checked it, and it's dry. Uh, it's yellow, which is fine. That's just from the sun. It doesn't it doesn't hurt the hay at all. And I think starting tonight, tonight is my feeding night. I will probably start pulling uh, hay from that pile and feeding over there. Uh, four horses times four flakes. A day is 16 flakes. These bales have 18 flakes. So I'll be throwing a bale of hay a night over there and I'll start pulling again. I'll start pulling from this pile. Um, have you done a flake demonstration? Because I never know how you gauge that quantity. Is it in inches? Is it something the machine produces excellent. for you? Excellent. James had a question about what's a flake. Besides, well, you is the obvious <laughs> answer. <laughs> Hey. And me, and me. Let's not talk about your shirt. <laughs> the flake twins. Um, yeah, that's a really good idea because it's not by size. It's by weight. So that's an excellent question. And, ooh, I'll get a scale, and I'll have two different, well, this is a flake, and, okay, boy, he's good, isn't he? Okay, so that is how the hay is kept nice and dry over there. And do I have anything else to show the folks today? Oh, this is awesome. This is just a bunch of six by sixes. And I believe when the uh, when the Tennessee walking folks are here, they put it in an L. And so you back into in an L shape. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can step over it. You can you can put them uh, parallel and walk through them. You can put them parallel and back through them. You can double them up. You can put them at, at weird angles, you know, where it's kind of like this, crooked. We're buffering a little bit. So, you know, like, uh, how am I doing? Like this, and like this, and like this. So your horse has to take big steps and small steps. The idea is you don't step on anything. And horses are amazing. They know exactly where their feet are at all times. So, for example, when Crow stepped on me yesterday, it was he knew what he was doing. <laughs> FYI. Um... So that's what those poles are for. It's actually a great, it's very versatile over there. Lots and lots of stuff. There are some tires um, just hanging out. There's piles of rocks hanging out, ready for anyone to uh, use however they'd like. Um, one of my goals in the next couple of weeks is to set up something quite similar in our arena. So I can work mystery on it. I can lead Augie on it and maybe uh, use it with Crow. And I really think that Augie's not going to care about anything. He is so good. Uh, he just does it. And so that'll be interesting. I wanted to see. You know, I'll set up a challenge for him, and it's not going to be a challenge. I think he's going to be a phenomenal horse. And I don't think I have any more slides for you. That is our winter pasture. The horses are happy. They're well fed. They're getting plenty of salt. They have plenty of water. Um, obviously they don't care about the obstacles. I don't think anyone is actually going to go over the teeter tire on their own. Um, but wouldn't that be awesome if they did? Um, as, as you all know too, we had an incident, um, which is unfortunately is common and it's becoming more common. In fact, someone sent me an article in, to, on, in today's, um, KPAX, uh, on, from today's KPAX website. KPAX, the local TV station. Uh, TV? Yeah. Um, there is kind of a, almost a rash of people stealing horse hair. Tails, mostly. Um, and Flynn uh, had his forelock stolen a couple nights ago. And you remember he had the long forelock almost to the tip of his nose. It was gorgeous. Well, it's gone. And uh, I put it on the local Facebook page, and pe I've got almost 100 people angry. And I actually got some uh, contact by the neighbors who said they're going to keep an eye out, and I'm going to go door to door, pass out my card, 
and ask them to let me know what's happening. They really, people love the horses there and they, they want to they wanna know uh, that they're safe. So the neighborhood is up in arms as it should be. Um, so that is, uh, keep an eye on the pasture for us, but uh, not everyone over there is a bad, a bad character. Uh, a lot of people like to look. Um, signs will be going up, stay out of the pasture, don't feed the horses, etc. Um, that's all I know about the winter pasture right now. Um, I'm going to be teaching James how best to navigate it in the snow so we don't leave huge ruts and also how best to throw the hay so the horses do during the winter what they do best, which is walk and eat for 20 hours in a 24 hour period. Um, again, you're welcome to keep an eye on the pasture, but um, uh, I think I think the word has gotten out and whoever did it uh, will not do it again. That's Boots on the Ground. I don't believe I have a walkabout interview. Uh, I was going to interview James, uh, but he is out on his other job and not back in time. One thing you might be interested in, I don't know if he mentioned this when he was talking to Suzanne, but he worked at a wildlife safari park. It was a private one. And he has told me some stories about taking care of giraffes and things like that. And I think it would be fascinating. So I'm going to book him in for an interview in the near future. Can you imagine? I would love to take care of a giraffe. I've done cows, alpacas, llamas, chickens, turkeys, horses. Um, a bull named Clyde. Uh, no pigs or sheep. I have. I <laughs> clearly I have to add to my bucket list the animals Kelly's taken care of. So that is our show for today, folks. I appreciate you staying with us. I'm going to go vote, and I hope you're all voting too. Whoever you're voting for, please vote, and I will see you. I will personally see you Thursday at 2 o'clock to train Augie in mystery. Tonight, uh, with the time change, we're going to have to reschedule with Mac to find a time that works for everybody with, with daylight for the cameras. Stay kind. Stay warm. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.